Nothing. Are you sure? You want me to go look? No, I just want to be sure. Well, you picked the hell of a time to want to be sure. All right. Hey, I hear they're pulling us back somewhere, Shh. Junior. Yep, that any louder, and they're gonna hear it too. Oh, I heard it. I got it hot. That piece of news doesn't warm me a bit. Been hearing it for the months. About pulling us back? Yeah. Yeah? Where to? To China. Are hey, you kidding? Uh, sure, I'm kidding. Only generals talk about invading China. Yeah, well, they really want to. Generals always want to. It's a hobby of theirs to make war. Yeah, but they don't want war with China. You think? I was told not to think when I joined this man's army. Yeah, but with China? Would you shut up? <clears throat> You're gonna smoke. Yeah. What are you gonna do when you get out? Breathe. Breathe? Yeah, I ain't breathed since I got here. There ain't no breathing back in the States either, buddy. I uh, no. There's no good nowhere. Country's no good either. Full of too many holes. Too many good men dying. And when I get home, I'm gonna eat. Like there's no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. No. Oh. Then I'll pack it away just in case. No, what are you gonna do, Rodriguez? I mean, besides breathing. Forget. What was that? Would you cut that out? There's something out there. Yeah, only about 3,000 gooks. So what else is new? So what are they doing? Mailing invitations, you jerk. Why don't you stand up and give them our address? You got anybody home, Rodriguez? Huh? I said you got anybody home. No, nobody. You're none of your people left. My people? Yeah, I thought you people stuck together. Like glue, Jake. We stick like glue. Ghetto glue. It's very strong stuff. Keeps you in your place, and it keeps you polite. Well, you're polite enough. Yeah, and not white enough. There's a distinction. The distinction escapes me. Hey, Corporal. Fuller's on the line. So? So? You're the only NCO left around here. There ain't an officer for 10, 20 miles. There goes the neighborhood. Come on, he's got a place for you. Hey, take his order, Rodriguez, and order me a couple of hamburgers, okay? Yeah. Yeah. What's what situation? Well, you see, sir, we kind of got a little problem. The five of us have the entire VC division surrounded, and we got him begging for mercy. Yeah, what do you expect? Your air cover was lousy. Yeah, okay. So what do we do? Give me a map. Hamlet 337. Yeah, that's where we came from. Fuller, look, there's a whole division of VC out there. And what's so damn important about a schoolhouse? Oh, yes, sir. That sure does sound like an order to me, sir. All right, I'll will. If we make it. What's up? I don't know. Something's going on. They want us to go back up to that schoolhouse and hold up until they come get us. What? Well, why don't they pick us up here? We already been through that burg. I don't know. I don't know. There's nobody left up there. Just that division of V.C. wandering around. I don't like it. It don't sound right. Me either. They're not gonna pick us up here, though, so let's get moving. Hey. You take good care of us, Rodriguez. I'm dependent on you. Didn't they tell you, Jake? We're not dependable. They got something up their sleeve, Rodriguez. Yeah, stripes. Come on, move. That's real white here. That's real white. Insight. Stories of spiritual conflict in the 20th century.
Freedom is the greatest of human values. We were made to take charge of our own lives and to be responsible for what we ourselves do. When we do so, we grow as human beings. But when we are robbed of our freedom or fail to use it, we become alienated from our true selves, dehumanized. We're strange animals. To be happy, we have to be able to say yes to the situation in which we find ourselves. And more important still, we have to be able to say yes to what we ourselves do. What do we do if we can only say no to our situation because it offends our moral sensitivities? And what do we do if we are ordered to do things which violate our consciences? Who decides what we should do? And who is responsible for what happens? <laughs> Some mess. Wow. PS 36 was never like this, except on graduation day. Hayden, get on the radio. Tell them the military operation. Built by the Army Corps of Engineers for the education of the free people of South Vietnam. I wonder if anybody of Rudd great school around here. Well, what's the best education a guy can get? You learn who you can trust. You can't trust anybody. Congratulations, you just graduated. Okay, school's over. Let's go home. Are you eating again? Keeps my mind occupied. Keeps your stomach occupied. Well, then army travels on its stomach. You should cover a lot of territory. Corporal, I told him. Yeah? Well, what'd they say? Well, they sound like they're thinking it over. Great. You surprised them, huh? Headquarters got no faith in us. Yeah, well, the feeling's mutual. Aiden, keep on it. Will you try to tell them to uh, find out what we're doing here? Right. I'm going to take a look around. Yeah, OK. Hey, watch yourself. I just don't get it. You know what the trouble is with you, Rodriguez? No, what's my trouble? Man? You just ain't army material. That's exactly what I told my draft board. But they took me anyway. Out of sheer generosity, on the hope that the army atmosphere, conducive as it is to change, might straighten you out a little bit. But it didn't work. Well, what am I then? Tell me, Jake. Come on. Am I a failure? The trouble with you is, is you don't think you're expendable. See, and that's where you and the army differ. You are expendable. You're live ammunition, baby. You can't go home. My name is Rodriguez, man. And I am going home. You're expendable there, too. Hey, Corporal, there's a plane out there. Yeah? Uh, Who's? Ours. A, a recon. Flying real high, too. How high? Too high to see us. Hey, maybe we're on the edge of something. Hey, maybe that's why they want us here, huh? Look out on the perimeter. Yeah, it could be. Keep watching. Anything, Hayden? Hey, you want us to monitor this frequency, Corporal? Great. If you get the false scores, turn it up, OK? What do you want to, man? Same thing you want. They tell us we better keep our guns when we go home. For what? They're going to use us to fight the opposition, the home opposition. How do we go about fighting the, the home opposition? By being their targets. No, no, the brass won't allow that. Oh, man, it ain't allowed. It's, there's a logic to it. Some logic. Look. When we go home, we're going to be executed for being killers. You see, we are expendable. When you're expendable, you have to be expended. Hey, no, wait a minute. I don't get that, man. You remember Corporal Snark? Yeah. OK, well, he's been home eight months, and he ain't got a job, and all they do is ask him about me lie. Me lie? Well, he was clear across the panhandle from me lie. Back home, they think everybody over here is shooting at moving cradles. Well, they're all crazy. There were hundreds of me lies. What do they think war is, anyway? Numbers and profits? Look, if they knew what war was, there wouldn't be any wars, and that's logic. Nobody wants war. Especially the Army. It takes us away from our real purpose of being in uniform. <laughs> well, what is our real purpose for being in uniform? To prepare for war. Now, that's logical. Oh, man, you and your endless logic. Guaranteed to give you only the answers you want. Well, now you got it. OK, big shot. You know so much. But why now? I mean, why now, after so many wars, do they decide they don't want wars? All the guys that are fighting them. Well, who is fooling who? We are here. They ordered us. Nothing's changed. Change, my boy, is the only constant. War is the only constant. Well, it's steady work anyway. I mean, appointments available anytime, anywhere. I mean, they always need killers, right? That's all we are, is killers. Sure, what else could we be? We're part of the working pool. 
Well, what about the gooks? What are the gooks? They're part of their working pool. Well, I don't like to work. Complain of your union. I haven't got one. So write Congress. I would, but nobody there can read. Nah, they can read. Yeah, but not Spanish. Plane's going back. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. It's photographing to the south of us now, see? There's the north and the south. What does that mean? Maybe the drugstore screwed up that first roll of film. Funny. Get, get full and let me talk to him. I can't get through, Corporal. Nobody's answering. Well, then check your crummy equipment. Somebody's out there. Listen, I'll check it, man, but I know it's working. I just don't get it, man. I don't get it. Oh, that's right. enough. You know, for a corporal, you have a very poor attitude. Yeah. Yeah, come on, man. Come on, tell me about my attitude. You think you're still alive. Well, you're not. You see, on the books, you're already marked down as a casualty. Hey, man, I am standing here, and I am breathing, and I am alive! You got no future. Only dead people got no future. Therefore, you are dead, and that is logical. You're crazy. Oh, of course I'm crazy. I have to be crazy to stay alive when I'm already dead. I can't argue with you. Hey, look, you want, you want to tell somebody about it? Write a letter to your old man or okay, something, Okay, try this one on. Dear Pop, please don't shoot me when I come home. I know you have to, because I'm a war criminal, and you are a God-fearing American. Oh, I know you wanted me to fight the commies, Pop, but you see, I had to kill a few while I was doing it. Oh, and Pop, I've embarrassed my country. I committed the awful deed. I obeyed my superiors when they were wrong. But you can't shoot generals, Pop, because they're not expendable. We need them in case they get us into another war. Signed your expendable son, Jake. How's that? Logical enough for you? Transmission's okay, Corporal. They're just not answering. Hey, Jack! I found something. Yeah, what? Chopper tracks, a Cheyenne or something big. Must have landed on the main road outside of town. Yeah? And that's it? Just tracks? And this. The used flashbulb. Yeah, tracks. Somebody tried to sweep them away with a palm brush. What do you need a flashbulb in broad daylight for? You don't, except at night. Yeah. Last night. I'll lay you odds that chopper landed last night after we left. Took their pictures. And took off. Then they ordered us back in here. To the scene of the crime. What do you mean by that? I mean somebody's closing in on us. We didn't see anybody when we came in. There's nobody here now. I saw a plane. Yeah, 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 yeah. We saw it, too. They got us covered top to bottom. But we didn't do anything. We shot up that village, you jerk! But they told us to do that, didn't they? Did they? They ordered us to search and destroy. They didn't mention anything about killing. That's insane. We've all killed before. Maybe we're too good. That's it, we're too good. We uh, make it look too much like a real war instead of just a <laughs> police action. Hey man, he's got it. We are all gonna be pigeons. Well, that's it, don't you see it? I mean, that's why they wouldn't answer us. That's why they won't come in and pick us up. They're waiting for the VC to move in and do the job so there'll be nobody left to talk. After the VC has finished us off, Fuller comes back and cleans up, and we'd just be listed as casualties. We are casualties. We're dead already. <laughs> of activity elsewhere, though. Activity? What kind of activity? Small stuff, uh, patrols, probably. They're grouping up for something. Ganging up it, more like it. They're using some kind of scrambler. I can't make it out. I don't have any crystals for those frequencies. You really got it sewed up. Oh, come on, let's get out of here. Yeah? Yeah? What do you suggest? 
We could give ourselves up. Brother, we already gave ourselves up to the U.S. Army. Definitely a bad move. Hey, Milo, look at it this way. We're surrounded by 3,000 Viet Cong. They're surrounded by 10,000 of our guys, who are in turn surrounded by 3 billion Earth people who are very unhappy we're here to begin with. Yeah, but can't we do something? I mean, if they think we're guilty, at least we deserve a trial. Oh, trials. Very risky business, Milo. But we could win. I don't think our superiors want to take a chance on that. Take a chance? But we're innocent. We'll be guilty as charged. The charge will be that we kill the people in this town. Hey, come on. They ordered us to kill the people in this town. Oh, Milo, a technicality. Don't you understand anything? Now, look. Would you shoot your dear old mother if somebody ordered you to? Huh? No. Well, why? Because I wouldn't want to. Exactly. <clears throat> Officers of the court, I put it to you. This man uh, obviously wanted to kill those people. No, I didn't want to kill anybody. Well, what's this? Compulsion? You were compelled to kill? Yes, yes, I was, by orders. You were ordered to fight a war, not to kill people. Well, how am I supposed to fight a war? By killing the enemy, not the people. They were the enemy. Now, wait a minute, Milo, you're confused. Did you see any uniforms? How about some insignias? Were they carrying rifles? Did they look like soldiers? Oh, none of them ever look like soldiers. You know that. You can't tell the difference. There is a difference. One of them can be killed, and the others cannot. But that doesn't tell me who to shoot. You shoot who we tell you to shoot. But you told me to shoot them. But we told you not to shoot them if they shouldn't be shot. Well, then how am I supposed to know who to shoot and who not to shoot? It By getting make... court-martialed for shooting them. But they're not going to court-martial us. They're not even going to let us get out of this. Tell me, Milo, how would it look in the public image? I mean, we can't have people getting away with murder and war. The killers must be killed. Yeah, but that's not fair. That's not right. Lay off the jerk. You're scaring the hell out of him. Ah, he's so naive it kills me. Rodriguez, get off his back. Anybody who believes in a just war is naive, Rodriguez. Or injustice, Jake. I should have known I couldn't find it in a white man's world. I could have told you that. Oh, yeah? Well, what's your story, buddy? If I were back home, I'd melt myself deep in the ghetto. And I know, I know they ain't gonna find me there. Yeah? How would you live? My people. My people would take care of me. What about me? I'm sorry, Corporal. But you're too white. No, I'm too white. Face it, Rodriguez. We played the game with them and we lost. Yeah, well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm gonna put up a fight. Who are you gonna fight? First guy that pokes his head through that door. No, you can't do that. Then they'll really throw the book at us. They so ain't even gonna bother with the book, you jerk. We should give ourselves up. Yeah? Yeah? To who, Milo? What do you suggest? The Viet Cong? Or how about, uh, how about the military brass? I'm sure they'd like us hanging around to remind them of a crime they committed. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. They all get off scot-free. But we get burned. We get burned, baby. Just so everybody's conscience is soothed. Don't fight it, Rodriguez. We can't win. There's got to be a way. I mean, I mean, there's got to be somebody. There's got to be somebody who's going to help us. Somebody. <laughs> Steve Bolling's back from court yet? Uh, no, sir. Hang on. Uh, sir, I have a real peculiar call here. Who for? Well, no one in particular. They're just asking for anyone in the legal office. Well, tell them to come in and see me. Well, they can't. They're surrounded by the enemy somewhere up in the panhandle. Howard, since when do they have telephone booths in enemy territory? Well, they got a phone patch going with some ham operator in Way, and he called us. You're serious? Reception's lousy, but they're there. Give me that. Hello? Wait for what? OK. This is Captain Rushing. What's the situation up there? Oh, hold on, I want to get that down. Uh, who is Fuller's commanding officer?
see your commanding officer. Uh, he's over there, sir. Captain Rushing, Legal Services, General. I would like to speak to you, sir. Now, wait, Captain. No, sir. Well, what do you want to talk about? Alone, sir. I beg your pardon. Alone, sir. Oh, it's quite all right, Captain. They've all been cleared by security. Well, sir, I would like to speak to you about Corporal Rodriguez and his squad in Hamlet 337. How do you know about them? Outside Army channels. Sir. Whatever your source of information is a serious breach of security. Serious for whom, General? What are you getting at? Human rights, sir. Who's right? Corporal Rodriguez and his men, and the civilians who were massacred in Hamlet 337. What are you talking about? Those were Kong in that village. And a lot of civilians, sir. Dead ones now. You've been looking at too much television. We have photo coverage of that entire operation, which shows black pajamas in that village, but that doesn't mean they were civilians. Can you guarantee they weren't? I didn't get a guarantee with my commission. That Hamlet is in a free fire zone. It's been hiding Kong. It's our policy not to kill civilians, but if some of them stayed to help the Kong, that's their problem. Mine is to fight the war. General, there was a massacre in that village which is being covered up. Those five men deserve a trial. They're not in a courtroom, Captain. They're surrounded by the enemy in a battle situation. Because you ordered them there. Because I was ordered to fight a war. With their lives? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, sir. General, I am not talking about just another military maneuver. I'm talking about throwing out the rule book. Wholesale violation of human rights. This is very common in this kind of war, Captain. But that doesn't make it right. No, it doesn't. But in war, morality is a luxury you can't afford. If you are personally responsible for the denial of their rights, I will personally take you to court and prosecute you. Sir? I don't think you'd win. Why not? Because those men don't have any rights. Nobody does in a war. They're being used, Captain, just as everything else is used in a war. Oh, yeah. I don't have time to teach you military strategy, but come over here and take a look at that map. There's Hamlet 337. In that jungle on the perimeter, we know there are 3,000 Kong and elements of a North Vietnamese division. They've got our entire push stole. Now, I'm not allowed to defoliate to find them. I've got to draw them out. You're using those five men as bait? Just what kind of a man are you, General? A military man, Captain. An employee of a government at war. Which means I follow orders. Not orders like these. Not murder. Oh, Captain, I, I know how you feel. You were educated in American justice and American tradition. And you have a, an ingrained revulsion to any deviation from that tradition. But where are your eyes, Captain? What the hell do you think war is? It's madness. A fight to the finish with no rules. It's out of anybody's control. But we have rules. We have a tradition. Every nation has a tradition. And, Captain, human beings are aggressive animals. We enjoy beating the hell out of each other, imposing our will. When nations do it, it's war. To win, you kill off enough of the other side so that they can no longer resist. No justice in that. I don't understand you, sir. And I can't believe this. You came in here expecting to see some gold-braided monster with a knife in his teeth, didn't you? Well, Captain, the monster is the war, the whole situation. I may work for it, but I can't take sole responsibility for it. Your court would agree. We all know who really pays our bills and who has the final word over what we do out here. Are you trying to tell me that Corporal Rodriguez's squad had its fate signed, sealed, and delivered by the people of the United States? Even more automatic than that. All our fates have been sealed. That's madness, isn't it? General, Charlie's out in force. They've taken 337, sir. Alert Fuller to move in. Call air control for saturation bombing. We've got our Kong. Right.
In a democracy, it is the people who have the ultimate say about all questions of policy, including whether or not to go to war. How do we make this decision? Do we think only of the welfare of our own people, of the power and prestige of our own country? Or do we broaden our vision and think of all the world's peoples and make their welfare our primary concern? Patriotism is a good, but it is not the highest good. Concern for all men, wherever they live, whatever their political or economic system, is still higher. Differences between peoples are inevitable, but war is not. We must find rational, human ways of settling these differences. It is not difficult to document the insanity of modern warfare. The loss of human life is appalling, and most often it is innocent civilians who get hurt the most. And the brave men asked to fight these wars, if they live, are so often dehumanized in the process. The destruction of needed resources, whether man-made or natural, is tragic. A recent UN study tells us that $110 billion spent over the next 15 years would completely obliterate hunger and famine and poverty from the face of the earth. And yet each year, with millions of our brother human beings starving to death, the world's peoples are spending more than $200 billion for the means of making war. Doesn't this seem absurd to you? Isn't there something we can do about it now? Insight is a production of the Paulist Fathers, a group of Catholic priests who serve their God by serving those outside their church.